I would like to now talk about a neural endocrine reflex. There are many of these, but I'm going to pick out one. And let me define it first. Neural endocrine. Neural means there's a nervous arm to this, which is traveling on nerves, action potentials, so forth. Endocrine means something is released, a hormone released into the blood, and it travels to some distant target tissue. So the neural endocrine reflex I would like to talk about is in the cat. And the cat is referred to as an induced ovulator, or you can also call it a reflex ovulator. The domestic cat will not ovulate until mating occurs and there is this neural endocrine reflex. So in those cases, in induced ovulators, there is an LH surge that is produced. And you should know that for all mammals, basically, there has to be an LH surge to cause ovulation. Now, some animals do it without mating. Okay, so let's look at this. Definitely, the domestic cat is an induced ovulator. Mating must occur usually over several episodes for LH surge to occur. Okay, but those of you that are interested in wild animals, the African line is also an induced ovulator. Okay, now the other term that other animals undergo is called a spontaneous ovulator. This would be like a dog, a horse, and many of the common farm animals ovulate without mating. So let me show you a list of induced ovulators. This could also be called an induced, a list of reflex ovulators, sorry. Well, we did mention the domestic cats. And then also now, rabbits and camels, llamas and alpacas are termed induced ovulators. They will not ovulate until the act of mating has occurred. Let's look at some more animals that are induced ovulators. Ferrets, mink, voles, the short-tailed tree shoe, shrew, sorry, and then the 13-lined ground squirrel. And then, of course, since I already mentioned the lines, I'm going to add the African line to this list. Now, let's look at a chart from the domestic cat. And, you know, the female, maybe you don't know it, is called the queen. And on the left part of this figure is a graph that shows peaks of E2. And I'm trying to point that out with the laser pointer. And that means estrus is occurring. And in this graph, it's basically every nine days, but there is no mating. So follicles grow, produce estrogen, and then they become what's called a tretic. The follicles die. The eggs that are in the follicles also disintegrate. Progesterone, which is an evidence of ovulation, stays low because there is no ovulation. Then on the right side of the graph, we have estrus. They don't mark it here, but it is estrus, but no mating in this first peak. Follicles die. But at the second peak, there is estrus, and there would be mating right here. Mating causes ovulation. And therefore, we'll find out later that the follicles turn into a structure that make progesterone. And then we have progesterone produced in this case. 
One of the reasons why mating is necessary is in this figure here, which I'm going to enlarge. It is the penis of the cat, and it shows the keratin barbs or spikes on the penis. And it stimulates the anterior vagina, which sends messages to the brain. And we'll see that in the following Okay, so now ovulation in the domestic cat we're focusing on is a induced ovulator or a reflex ovulator. So let me explain that. When the cat is mated, there's an afferent arm. It's a neural arm that goes to the brain. So I'm going to put that neural up there. And the thing is, at the time of mating, there are sensory receptors in the anterior vagina that stimulate neurons that lead directly to the hypothalamus. Once they reach the hypothalamus, then we activate the efferent arm. Hopefully you see that over here. Now the efferent arm is endocrine. That means some hormone is released, travels in the blood, and finds its target tissues. So this would be automatically slower than neural. Ends up being the hypothalamus initially releases gonadotropin releasing hormone. We had that in the endocrine discussions. GnRH travels down the portal vessels and it goes to the anterior pituitary gland, which in turn releases LH. LH is termed luteinizing hormone. And that hormone will go throughout the whole body, but target the ovary, the pre follicles that are on the ovary. So now I've drawn this process because I really couldn't find a good diagram on the internet. So I had to do my artistic thing here. So let's start down in the lower left, mating. Those keratin spikes you saw stimulate the anterior vagina. This is all a sensory neuron, sensory receptor. Therefore, the afferent arm is neural. There's a nerve that runs all the way up to the brain. The hypothalamus at the base of the brain will release GnRH, gonadotropin-releasing hormone. That travels in a short blood supply down to the anterior pituitary which then releases luteinizing hormone. We spelled that out before. This goes in the blood. So a hormone going in the blood, that's an endocrine action. This is called the efferent arm. These hormones travel throughout the body, but only bind to their target tissue. And the target tissue would be in the ovary, it specifically the pre ovatory follicle. The follicle takes about 24 hours after it sees the surge of LH to ovulate. And so the whole thing after mating and many episodes of mating, it's at least 20 to 24 hours until ovulation occurs. So now we just said the word ovulation. And the only picture I could find of ovulation was human ovulation, which is good enough for us. And let me show you this diagram. Follicular fluid is oozing out of a follicle. A follicle is a fluid-filled structure that has one egg within it, and it has a lot of fluid, and at the time of ovulation, it oozes from the ovary. And the egg, which we can't see right here, would then be expelled from the ovary 
and would go into the oviduct, which we haven't talked about yet. This green structure is totally artificial. It's a medical instrument that's coming down and it's in the picture, but there's nothing green in the human body like that. So this is the ovary, the whole outline of the ovary, but follicular fluid is coming out of a follicle and there's an egg in here someplace, and this whole process is called ovulation. Now, I just want to bring this diagram out as a summary. So somebody has drawn this. I just thought it was maybe cute. But most female cats will ovulate after four or so copulations. But sometimes they take many more copulations. And it looks like sometimes there might be 20 copulations over a single day. And therefore, sometimes it's hard to pinpoint when gestation starts if it's over a 24-hour period. And I've got another summary slide here because it's good to summarize. Cats are termed induced ovulators, sometimes called reflex ovulators. It's all about the mating of the cat. They will not ovulate usually until they're mated, but this diagram does say that sometimes spontaneous ovulations may occur. And that's an important point. You know, sometimes the cats don't read the biology books. And then only after the ovulation will progesterone from the ovary show up and that's an important point for hormones progesterone is only present after ovulation has occurred thank you